and welcome to another AGR system update. This is 11th episode. In this one we'll work with creating subfolders and cleaning up the uh, folder structure a bit. I also moved character to the main AGR folder, not examples folder, as skeleton is one of the core assets that is absolutely uh, you know, super important for the entire system to work. I've made a new subgraph which is called AGR IK to FK fix and I will show you how to use it. Uh, I made a special setup for water surfaces override and there is new um, I just take account of uh, character being in water when it comes down to footsteps. Uh, also there is a new bool value in the main graph which is called strafe walking. Uh, to our uh, library, I've added the regeneration float. Um, so one of the functions we made in the previous uh, ability tutorials. Uh, there is a new uh, animation modification tag, which is ignore peach. And that means that any aim offset will basically just ignore peach. So that's very good for top down games where you don't want your character to aim up and down. Um, partially fixed the auto aim and added a new function to the uh, interface which is called uh, aim from um, and it allows you to specify what is the origin of the calculation of the automatic aim so you can you might want to uh, do a calculation based on camera position or you want to do calculation based on specific mesh or scene component or even a very specific socket like uh, mesh uh, head socket for example. Uh, falling bullion now also takes um, in consideration that the character might be flying and we also added a new bullion which is called uh, swimming. Okay I cleaned up the folder structure a bit so there is less stuff going on in the main uh, folder. All the animation notifications are here. All the animation graphs are here including the new one. And we also in the AGR got now a folder called characters and it has the mannequin and the mannequin arms. And mannequin arms is just a mesh. It's still using the same single skeleton that we have here. So this is the only skeleton that we are working with. Okay, let's talk about this uh, FK to AK uh, aim and what it does and why would you ever consider using it. So it's this. <coughs> it basically runs one copy bond uh, chain, then a second copy bond chain and then just blends them together. And why and where would you use it? And a good example will be the core graph where if you go into the base pose, you have this entry pose, which is by default, you can see it here. And this is the third person character uh, idle pose. So uh, if you go into this animation, you can see that um, those are the IK bones. They are not animated. Those are the IK bones for the legs. They are not animated and they are not fitting the FK bones at all. So this uh, anim graph is made for uh, animations that someone made without considering the IK bones, which are super important to most games. And they are just fixing the location uh, and for some bones, the rotation of the IK bones uh, to match the FK bones. So the core graph pose looks like this right now when you're running the entire graph so you are running the base pose then you run the overlay pose then you are blending those poses with montages and then you go to this ik and this ik is running through ik aim offset and this aim offset if you have aim type of look at it's doing some uh, ik on the entire spine and also the hips so it's moving the hips a bit and because uh, it's turning the hips and uh, correcting the foot placement, you can see that this is the final pose. And then you have this uh, linked graph that goes through uh, animation modification tags and just doing a left hand correction. Uh, if you don't have um, tag saying left hand, uh, ignore left hand correction. 
So this is one of the tags uh, for animation modification. Uh, the other one I was talking about is in the event graph. Uh, and uh, Okay, but not this event graph, it's in the core event graph. And when you go into aim offset, after entire calculation of all the aim offset, uh, there is this uh, ignore pitch. So we're just checking if this tag container has an ignore pitch tag, and if it does, we're just setting our aim offset y axis to zero, and that's it. It doesn't affect the first person aim offset, uh, which is calculated separately. Uh, the, the entire uh, calculation for the first person aim offset uh, is being done here. Okay, let's go back to our anim graph and let's go back to our example. So whatever, whenever you use this new graph, you have to do it before this IK. Uh, so you can do it here, you can do it here, you can do it here, or you can do it in any of the subgraphs. So I am using it here, and once I hit foot correction, I will match uh, IK bones to our FK bones, so the animation pose. And then our any correction, you see that? It will also match. So now that we are using aim offset look at and we are twisting our pelvis, uh, foot will be locked in this exact positions and they will not move. So we'll bend the knees, we'll bend uh, the spine, we'll bend everything, but that's it. And you can see that our hands are not uh, matched as should be as well. And we just hit hand correction, compile, and now we are matching this pose perfectly. Now, uh, this will make any, um, you know, animation retarget to a different skeleton uh, basically useless because the IK bones are usually used for correction of a different skeleton so the animation matches its speed. Uh, you don't have uh, foot sliding and, you know, you just, you just do a general correction of right hand to left hand uh, ratio and all that. So uh, this is a special note for badly made animations that you can fix them with it. Or it is made for animations when you have a very simple anim graph and you also have trouble using the, uh, you know, uh, IK bones. So there's that. It's uh, pretty useful. This is also useful in one more uh, thing. When you have a blend space and at certain angles you can see this, that the FK and IK bones are mismatched severely, like really badly, then you can place this new node uh, right after this blend space, just here, and make just the foot correction. And that would help a lot uh, in how the animation is being run. Okay, uh, new updates to the Soundmaster uh, component. I've made some improvements on general performance. I made some improvements on how uh, footsteps are being uh, detected. Uh, and now, even if you're not running any animation, it should still um, make footstep sounds every now and then. So if you go into Paragon example, It's more precise, it's more reliable, it just works a lot better now. And it works better on jumping and landing, of getting actual two hits, okay? And there's uh, one more thing. I've been playing with um, Unified uh, Water System, the new plugin that is for free for the month, and created my own uh, water body blueprint Inside this blueprint, if I, you know, overlap any actor, I am just sending a message in water and uh, that's it. But what I could do is just get component by class and I can run a function on this uh, sound component. So basically, if this is a valid component, I can do function on it and for the function, and there are two new events. One is called setup water surface, which just tells us which physics surface is the water. And the second one is setup in water. And these are non, both are non-replicated. And uh, none of these values 
is replicated as far as I know because there's just no need for that. They are mostly, uh, you know, just um, uh, cosmetic. So what it does now that you are spawning um, particles and sound, you are uh, selecting either the key of the surface from the trace or you're overwriting it with the water surface that you specified in your setup. So when you are in water, uh, then it will automatically ignore whatever is underneath the water, whatever the surface is, and it will just, whenever it hits any surface, it will say that, oh yeah, it's water. It works really well. And it detects when it is in water, when it's not in water, and plays sounds properly. Okay, the strafe walking um, is extremely useful at some cases. So for example here I am using strafe walking and I am changing between this uh, bi-directional blend space when I am strafe walking and the other one I am using is just a 2D one when I'm not strafe walking and it's a sprinting one. So I can do it in a single state. So this is just a... Um, yeah, so when you go here you see the... A standard uh, blend space for just standing and you have idle to walking and this walking is picking a different blend space based on this value of strafe walking so that's very helpful and useful Okay, now when auto-aiming, let's see that. When auto-aiming, there is a, a new interface call, which is called uh, get aim from component. And you just uh, input a sync component and you say if it uses socket, if it uses socket, what's the name of the socket. And uh, the entire auto-aim system will take this specific component as the calculation for the aim from. So. When I run this uh, this example and I am targeting now something that uses auto aim, it will take my third person camera instead of my first person camera to calculate the aim because this is the component that is relevant for my auto aim. But I could specify that I should, uh, in a situation when I have, um, you know, a very static, um, when I have a very static uh, camera, I might want to do traces from the character himself, for example. So I can take either the capsule or the mesh, and I can even specify that I want to do trace from, uh, you know, spine 03 or head or any other socket. Yeah, so that works pretty well. Oh, another small uh, quality of life improvements is that now uh, our core anim graph uh, in event graph we have just few more states now uh, our um, used to be falling is falling boolean is now in air boolean which is a different name because it's more accurate to what it does so it's checking if the character is falling or is flying and um, yeah, like character can be flying and not really moving as flying, but we might want to change the state of the movement to flying for some reason. Uh, so, for example, in a melee game, um, like we have here, uh, when we are doing a dash in air, I want to change our locomotion type to flying because, you know, um, on the ground, I'm just moving on the ground. But in the air, if I'm using root motion, I would still be falling due to gravity. 
If I set gravity scale to zero, I would be constantly going upward because of my jump velocity. So uh, if I change my movement type to flying and I do this, I will just hang in there for a second with some air control and then I will fall like I should. Other thing is just, uh, you know, just because we might want to use it, we are checking swimming state and actually why not, we can also um, make flying state. Just in case, like setting another uh, boolean variable doesn't really cost us that much memory, so let's do it. So yeah, this is all the improvements. Uh, I'm making improvements as we go uh, based on the projects I'm working on. So whenever something that I see that I actually input to the system more than once and it is very reusable, I'm just inputting it as a permanent part of the entire system. So uh, it will be easier to work on different kind of games on multiple projects for all of you. Thanks for listening and see you guys soon.